Welcome back to Remote Sensing Applications using ArcGIS. In this session, we're going to work with a product produced by the USGS called eModus. And in theory, eModus has many advantages over the standard global MODIS vegetation index product. So, for example, it's produced for Alaska as seven day composites and yet the standard global MODIS NDVI product is produced at a 16-day composite. And instead of being in a HDF format, it's in a TIFF format. And instead of being in a sinusoidal projection, it's already in the Alaska Albers projection. So basically, there's many theoretical advantages of this product compared to the global product. The one big question is, how reliable is it in terms of screening out cloud-contaminated pixels? And that's what we're going to assess in this exercise. So we'll start with uh, this raster that's a TIFF raster, and it's Alaska eModus NDVI 2013 from day of year 141 to 147. And it's one kilometer pixels, and it's a geo-TIFF. And day of year 141 to 147 in 2013 was May 21 to May 27. So basically what we want to do is create a raster of all the high quality NDVI pixels during this weekly composite period based on a second companion raster, which is the quality raster. So this raster, a value of zero represents high quality pixels. So it's a very similar process to what we did in our last video session. So the first thing we'll do is we'll rename our layers to simpler names. So for example, this layer I'll rename to NDVI, and this layer I'll rename to QC. Okay, so just like when we were working with the standard MODIS global NDVI product, we're gonna have a QC equal to zero for high quality NDVI pixels, we want the pixels with NDVI above 2000. So if this question is true and this question is true, one times one times the NDVI value will give us the good NDVI value during that composite period. And then just OK. And just like before, we use the set null tool to set those pixels that either had low NDVI values or were cloud contaminated, they will get a value of no data. So basically the question is, is the value zero? And if the value of this raster is zero, they were low quality pixels, so they'll become no data. And then we'll output and call it good NDVI for that composite period, underscore no data, and then okay. So the output raster is an NDVI value ranging from 2001 up to 10,000. And we could use the identify tool to check our work. So here's a pixel. It had a QC value of zero, so it was a high quality um, clear sky pixel, so we keep the NDVI value. Here's a pixel in the Alaska range. It had an NDVI of negative 477, so it becomes no data. And here's a pixel in Cook Inlet. It had a fill NDVI of negative 10,000 and a QC of 10, so it becomes no data. So everything checks out. Okay, so now what you need to do is the same exact step for the period May 28th to June 3rd. So that will be composite day of year 148 to 154. And then also the next composite period, June 4th to June 10th, will be day of year 155 to 161. And then our last composite period will be June 11th to June 18th and that will be composite period 162 to 168. So process these three composite periods to get for each composite period that's a weekly composite period, the good NDVI or otherwise it's no data pixels. Okay, so when you're all done processing, you'll have the NDVI from May 21 to May 27th that was from clear sky pixels. The NDVI values are all above 2000. Then the same thing for the next composite period from May 28th to June 3rd, and then June 10th, June 4th to June 10th, and then finally from June 11th to June 18th. So then the question is for each high quality pixel, 
did the NVVIs consistently increase as we go from May 21st to May 28th to June 4th to June 11th? So once again, we'll rest our calculator to ask that question. Okay, so the first question is, was the good NDVI during the composite period May 21st to May 27th less than the good NDVI from the next composite period May 28th to June 3rd plus a value of 500 to account for any random noise in the NDVI? And then our second question, and is the NDVI from May 28th through June 3rd less than the NDVI from June 4th to June 10th plus the value of 500. And then our last question, and is the NDVI during the composite period June 4th to June 10th less than the NDVI during the next composite period June 11th to June 18th plus the value of 500. So if that's true for each of those questions, the value one will be output to this new output raster. If it's false for any of those questions, the value will be zero, and then just OK. OK, so once again, we can check our results using the identify tool. So for example, for this pixel, it had a flag of zero for the green up test. And it had a flag of zero because we started in May 21 with an NDVI of 7,359, and then we actually decrease. So we went down to 6703, and then we went down to 5514. So we would expect the opposite as we go from May to late May to early June to mid June, we'd expect the NDVI to consistently increase. So the next pixel over, we have a value of 1 because the NDVI does increase for that pixel. So it goes from 6268 to 6513 to 6561 to 7071. So this is the pattern we expect. Okay, so if you go to the Blackboard website, I've got some quiz questions for you on the eModus processing that will lead you to the next video session.